Okay, guys, we're moving into the last um, few sections. Um, so there's no no class tomorrow, but I want to basically um, everything that you've done with verifying equations uh, and uh, unit circle, it's all going to come kind of come together. So really, we're not doing much that's new. It's just solving equations going to look a little different. But just like how we all the strategy that we did with verifying equations, whether it's GCF or uh, applying trig identities or common denominators, all that will come into play. Uh, and then our unit circle values. Good morning, Milton students, visitors, faculty, and staff. Please stay up to your pledge of allegiance. Okay, so uh, today we're going to try to uh, get through these two sections here. Um, they're going to feel very much the same. It's just that we have some identities that we can that, uh, that will add to the steps before we solve. Um, so if you guys can turn to page 16. We'll work through the odds. Um, and then for the set next section, we'll work through the odds as well uh, tomorrow. Um, I will have a help session going over these two same sections again, just maybe going through the even problems. If you wanted to um, sit in on that, uh, I will send out a, a Teams link uh, tomorrow morning, and but also record that as well. Okay, uh, so on page 16. Right, so we, we're going to be relying on our unit circle values. Um, it says find all solutions on the interval from guys, guess who? Okay, from zero to two pi. Uh, so uh, typically, what we want to make sure that we do is we want to we want to uh, account for all the solutions. Okay, so typically we don't want to try to divide a solution away. Even though algebraically it may be correct to divide cosine and make it go away, we're losing solutions here. So um, typically we don't want to divide by a variable. We typically want to take a GCF out. So here um, we're going to try to um, get this to be separate. And the way we can get them to be separated is we can uh, factor out GCF. So what's the common factor uh, between these two terms here? Cosine, yeah. So I can take a, a cosine from both terms. So here I, I am going to show div, div, a division, but I'm not dividing it away. I'm just 
uh, I've already accounted for it in my uh, GCF. Sorry, cosine X. But I just want to divide out so I can know what is left inside the parentheses. Okay, so um, what's two cosine X sine X divided by cosine X? Just two sine X. Uh, cosine over cosine is one. So now that we have factored form, we can set both equal to zero separately and solve these equations separately. Uh, cosine x equals zero. We'll deal with that later. Uh, let's try to clean this up here. So I can add one to both sides and then do what? Divide by two. Okay. Okay. So here, our interval is from zero to two pi. We we'll want to list out all the the values, all the uh, radian measures where cosine of x equals zero. So where is cosine equal to zero? Five or two, where else? Think about our unit circle values. Where else is cosine? Yeah, three, five or two. Okay. Uh, where is sine equal to one half? Okay. Five or six, and where else? Five or six, right? First, second quadrant, right? And the five or six family. Okay. okay so taking uh, things that we've learned from our verifying unit, our verifying section, and also just practicing through our um, unit circle. Um, Maybe four solutions. Yeah, that's right. Four solutions. Good. <clears throat> okay, number three. Uh, what do you think we can do first? Yeah, so we got to think in terms of factoring. We don't want to divide. If we divide by tangent, algebraically is correct, but if we lose tangent, we lose some solutions. So before we take GCF, though, let's bring everything over to one side, just like how we have the number one. And then once we have everything on the same side with the zero showing up, I can take out a GCF. Right. So I'm going to move that tangent to the left side. So now, what's my factor here? Tangent X. Okay. So just like before, we can take a tangent X out. If I divide the tangent away, because I've already taken care of it in the GCF, Let's see what's left over. What do we get here? Sine squared x minus one. Okay, we have a nice separation between uh, trick functions, so that means I can treat tangent of x separately from sine squared x minus one. I set both equal to zero and solve for both um, solutions separately. I'll clean up that right side here. Okay, take the square root. Plus or minus shows up. So I want sine of x equal to plus or minus one. So all the variations of one I want to list out. Okay, let's start off with this side here. Where's tangent equal to zero? Okay, zero. And pi, yep, so it's x over y, right? I'm oh, sorry, y over x, right? So 0 over negative 1. Now here, if we look at our restriction here, we're going to go for 0 to 2 pi, but we don't want to include 2 pi. So uh, so we're just going to say 0 and pi, right? Because 2 pi is outside of our, of our interval. Uh, yeah, one second. 
Hmm? You're right. So let me talk about that. Uh, zero and pi. Okay, so the reason why is because you see that bracket there. Bracket means that zero is part of the interval that we can include as part of our solution. Parentheses means that we get close to it, but we never reach it. So two pi is slightly outside of our interval. We want to get, we can get close to two pi, but we can't reach two pi. Okay, so where is sine equal to one or negative one? Power two, two power two. Four solutions again, just like number one. Yes. If it's plus or minus. Yeah, plus or minus one means sine of x equals to one, but we also want sine of x equals to negative one. Okay, number three. Uh, what's your first step? Square root, yeah, square root. Okay, plus or minus square root of three. We want basically all four quadrants will be represented here. So this is going to be in the family of what? Pi over three, right? Yep. Pi over three over one. That's pi over three. So all the um, all the pi over three family. All the angles within that family is going to be represented. OK, next page. Number seven. All right, look at how number seven is set up. Guess what we have to involve here? Yeah, we got to go through a trinomial factoring. Okay, so um, either you go through star method or you go through um, uh, the uh, grouping method. Either way works. Let me, um, I'll put this on a separate sheet like this. Okay, so you see you see the cosine squared, you get cosine to the first power, you got that constant. We got to go through trinomial factoring. Maybe we can solve an easier problem or factor an easier um, expression first, just so that um, if this works for you, okay. we'll do an easier problem. So. Um, uh, I'll go through both methods, whether uh, you do a uh, star method or whether you do grouping method. Um, either way, we have to be able to multiply, find two terms that multiplies to be A times C, which is four. And we also need to find two numbers that can add up to be that middle term, that negative four. So what are two numbers that can multiply to be four and add up to be negative four? Yeah, negative two and negative two. So those are my um, okay, negative two and negative two. So if I go through uh, star method here, um, a times c is four. My b value is negative four. I still have this uh, leading coefficient that I have to involve here, and I can put negative two and negative two. Okay, reduce. So that gives me x minus one half x minus one half. And we can pull any remaining fractional value out in front. So 
that's one way to factor. Okay. The other way is um, taking that middle term and splitting it up and going through GCF if that that works for you. So I'm taking that middle term there, negative 4x. I'm splitting it into next minus 2x and minus 2x. So I'm just rewriting my expression, just replacing that middle term. And here I can focus my attention on GCF. GCF is 2x. I'm left with 2x minus 1. GCF is negative 1 here, 2x minus 1. And then um, I have uh, shared parentheses, so that shared parentheses gets pulled out, and then the terms that are not in a set of parentheses gets their own set of parentheses. Right. So whichever way you do it, star method or grouping method, um, we need to be able to get to our factory. Questions here? OK, so this is not the problem that we're solving, right? We're, we just did a simpler problem. Now we can bring back cosine into the fold here. But the nice thing is we got factor form, so now we can set both equal to zero. But really, we can just set one equal to zero, right? Because these are duplicates. So if I have one, I can I have the other as well. Add one to both sides, divide by two. I get cosine of x equals to one half. Okay, so where is cosine positive? First and fourth. So where is cosine equal to one half? Pi over three and pi pi over three. Okay. Now, look at the directions here. What's different about the directions here? Find what? All solutions. So all solutions means we have to include all the possible coterminal angles. Um, that means I can, I can add infinitely many times plus 2 pi or subtract 2 pi, and I can keep reaching my infinite solutions. So the way that we can say this is we can say plus um, 2 pi n for n is an integer. And, and that basically accounts for all the possible um, all the possible solutions. Because if I keep adding 2 pi or subtract 2 pi, I'll, I'll be able to get to a coterminal angle that will work for this equation. Okay. Questions for 7? Let's go to number 9. First things first, what do you see? Yeah, GCF, yeah. So if I factor out a sine x, what I'm really doing is I'm dividing a sine away from both terms and whatever left over will go inside my parentheses. What comes first? Just what? Uh, sine x, right? Because I have sine squared over sine, so I'm going to live up with myself a sine x left over. Okay. What's the second term going to leave me with? Negative two times two. Set both equal to zero. Okay, we're sine equal to zero. Yeah. And oh. pi, right? So okay. I could say two pi as well, but I'll just add the plus two pi n. That'll account for um, all the solutions. Is there any place where sine is two? What do you guys think? No solution, right? So if you look at the sign graph, the sign graph is only going to hover between negative one and one. It's never going to reach as high as two. So no, no solution here. Okay. Now we still have solution for this 
equation is just it's not going to come from this expression here. It's only going to come from here. Okay, number 11, another trinomial factoring. Everybody okay with nine? What would you do first? Yeah, we got to get that. We see three different types of terms, right? You got that size square, you got that sign, you got that constant. We got to get that zero to show up. It's going to be another trinomial factor in here. Want to just do it easier? Factoring problem here. And again, I'll show both methods, whichever one works for you. Okay, we want two numbers that multiply to be negative four, but we also want those same two numbers to add up to be three. What are those two numbers? What are those two numbers? Four and negative one. Reduce if I can. And any leftover fraction will get pulled out in front. That's one way to do it. Another way is um, Put that four negative one in place of the three X and go through a grouping method. Yes, question. How long it just says equals to? Right, equals to two, but we have to bring it over to one side, get that minus two so we can actually go through our factory. Right? We can't, right, if we take a GCF out at this point and say equal to two, we're not going to get this right answer. We got to get, we got to set equal to zero. And so if you want to go through a grouping method here, GCF is 2x. Sorry, x plus 2. Okay, we got the same. Uh, result either way. Bring your sine function back in. Okay, is sine ever equal to negative two? Undefined. Okay. Okay. Where is sine equal to one half? Five or six and? Five, five or six, right? Yeah. Okay. It says all solutions, so do plus two pi n, where n is an integer.
in all solutions is always just plus two pi n. Plus two pi n, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at if you look at their sine graph, your sine graph is only going to reach as high as negative one and one. So it kind of hovers back and forth between those two. And so it's never going to reach as high or low as two or negative two. So it's just anything that's like between yeah, negative one. That's right. It's only if you look at all these, all these values are uh, between negative one and one. All right. Uh, we're going to do more of the same. Um, so if you guys can turn to page 18, um, it's just more problems, uh, but we call it, we put it in the next section just because we have double angles that we have to potentially play with. Okay. So again, we'll just try to work through all the odds and then I'll save the evens for tomorrow help session. Okay. All right, page 18. OK, so uh, we have more to do now because now we have potentially different uh, trig functions that we may want to involve. Um, so here we have tangent and sine, and these are not the same. It'd be hard to take a GCF out. Um, so what's one thing that we can do to make them more alike? What can I do with this? Yep, yeah, OK, we can definitely do that. What else should we do after we bring everything over to one side to make it so we can see some similarities between these two? Um, OK, maybe the root two and two has something to do with it. I'm looking at the tangent and sign. There's something I can do to make those two. Yeah, I can write tangent as. I know the cosine. So I'm going to rewrite that tangent of sine over cosine. And I'm also going to subtract that sine over. But I see that there is an opportunity for me to find a common denominator, right? So I can get it all under one fraction. So my common denominator is cosine of x. Have root two sine x, no changes here. This one will be minus two sine x cosine x. OK, so um, if I'm trying to set this equal to zero and trying to solve, I'm never going to worry about my denominator because my denominator would tell me where my solution is undefined. I don't care about where my solution is undefined. I'm looking for solutions. So if I'm ever setting a fraction equal to zero, I'm only setting the numerator equal to zero. Yeah, so if I am ever setting a fraction equal to zero, I'm only going to look at the numerator. The denominator, I'm not going to set that equal to zero. Okay. Uh, maybe an another way to think about this is if I have x um, over y is equal to zero, right? We only set the numerator equal to zero because technically the denominator has a one there. If I were to cross multiply, I would get the same thing, x equals zero. So I'm only going to set the numerator equal to zero. If there's a if there's a denominator variable, it basically is not part of what I'm looking for. Okay, let me finish this off on a separate sheet. So I'm going to set my numerator equal to zero.
And now it just feels like a separate problem. Um, what can I do if I were to start with this equation from scratch? Factor out sine x. So if I remove the sine x because it's already been taken out of my that's my GCF, then my remainder term is root two minus two over sine. Set both equal to zero. I subtracted the two and divided by negative two, so that's why I'm still left with a positive value. Okay, where sine equal to zero. Zero and pi, okay. And where is cosine equal to root two over two? Get first and fourth quadrant, right? Okay. Now here, um, the directions go back to going from zero to two pi. So we don't have to add that plus two pi n. We can leave it just within the first four quadrants. Okay, number three, we recognize what to do there. So we can skip number three. Let's go to number five. Okay. Okay, number five, cosine of 2y equals 1 half. Um, we have a double angle identity so we can, that we can play with here. So um, let's get it out of that 2y double angle. And we have three variations. And one of the variations, I'm going to just leave it in terms of cosine. So I'll pick the one that has cosine in it. But I could have used the one for sine. That would have worked too. Okay. And I will give you the uh, angles. I will give you a. Um, a formula sheet to use on your test. Okay, so then this becomes more straightforward, right? We can just bring everything, uh, try to get cosine by itself. Okay. One plus one half, what does that become? Which is? What's that as a fraction? Three over two, right? Okay. Dividing by two, I got a fraction here. So dividing by two would be the same as doing what? Yeah. Take the square roots, plus or minus. What does that turn into? Plus or minus? Yeah, we recognize that, right? Root three over two. Basically, all four quadrants will be represented in that pi over six family here. Oh, right. So I skipped a step here. So root three divided by root four. Same thing as root three over two. The square root of four is two. Okay, got three more for us uh, on page 19. We'll go down the column, 7, 9, and 11.
Okay, number seven, sine of 2x equals 2 sine x. We can play with this, right? We got a double angle identity for sine 2x. Get it out of double angle. Then we have an easier time matching the parts. Okay, what would you do first? Subtract, right? We don't want to divide by sine, otherwise we lose a solution here. We want to get it onto the same side. Think in terms of GCF. It's our GCF. Sine X. I'm going to take two sine X out. Um, I mean, you know, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Just makes it a little bit cleaner, maybe. So divide both sides by two sine X or divide both terms by two sine X. Okay, I'm left with cosine X minus one. Okay, set both equal to zero. Or sine equal to, to zero. Zero and pi. Or is cosine equal to one? Zero. Yeah, to zero. Okay. Now we're going, we're back to uh, for all values of the variable. So what do we include after these, these statements here? Yeah, just say plus two pi n. Okay, number nine, I see two things that I can do here. I can get that double angle to be resolved, and I can get that tangent to be in terms of what? Sine and cosine, right? I can get everything to be matching up a little better here. A force of one in, uh, under my first term there so I can see the need for my for common denominator. What's my common denominator? So sine x. Balance the fraction here. This denominator is missing a cosine x, so multiply that to the top. No changes with my second fraction. Put it all under one fraction. Again, if I have a fraction equal to zero, the denominator is not going to play a role. Because I'm not looking for where my function is undefined. I'm looking for where my function is equal to zero. So my denominator is not going to play a role. So basically, I'm stepping to the side and just starting a new problem. What do you see here? Two terms, they both share what? Sign, yeah, GCF. Factor form, set both equal to zero. Take the square root, plus or minus shows up. Now this looks a little bit, uh, may maybe you're not 
recognizing this as well. But do you guys know what plus or minus one over root two is the same thing as? Yeah, one over root two. If I rationalize that denominator there, same thing as root two over two, and that feels more familiar because that's a unit circle ratio. Here. Okay, so list out places where sine is equal to zero, zero and pi. List out places where cosine is equal to root two over two, basically all four quadrants. So everything in that power four family. Okay, it says all solutions, so plus two pi n. OK, one last one here, number 11. All right, 3x, OK, we don't have a triple angle identity, so What's a way for us to work around that 3x? We don't have a triple angle identity, but what do we have? Yeah, we got to think in terms of sum and difference identities here. So we got to break that 3x into a and b, a plus b. We got to play with that a little bit. So here's my formula. Cosine of A plus B is the same thing as cosine of A times cosine of B minus sine of A sine of B. And I'll give you the formula sheet on the on test again. No, no calculator. Are we not gonna have the stuff that we had on the quiz on the No, that's right. It's just gonna be the test is just over solving equations. What we're gonna cover from now till Friday. Everybody okay with um with how we're able to get that 3x into break it down into this and then to able to get to that sum and difference identity? so far okay there's something that we have to do what do you think what do you think is next in terms of our cleanup stage what is still a little bit um hard to work with good good yeah so we want to continue to break it down out of the double angle form so we can get everything to be lined up right so sine of two x there's only one option right so that we're, we're forced to have to go through two sine x cosine x so what do you think would be the best one to use for cosine 2x? The one that is in terms of what? Cosine, yeah. I know there's sine here, but the, the, the sines, eventually these sine squared will turn itself into cosine. So we just want to get everything in terms of cosine. That feels like the fastest way to get to where we want to go. So here's my cleanup stage. I'm just trying to get that sum of difference identity to be cleaned up, to be broken apart, and then that double angle to be continual, continually uh, broken down. Um, let's just see what all this cleans up to be here. Okay, almost there with our cleanup. There's one more thing we need to take care of, and what's that? Find a way to replace what? What's sticking out of this equation that we want to find a replacement for? 
So you look, all this is in terms of how many trig functions do you see here? There's two, right? Is there a way that we can get it down to just one? Can we change? Before factoring, we're still in the in the uh, in the substitution phase, the replacement phase. What's sticking out? Yeah, this is the stick. Yeah, what can I do with that sine squared? Yeah, so we know Pythagorean identity, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, and we know sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. So we're just trying to get everything out of double angle, everything in terms of one trig function, so we can have a much easier time kind of putting things together once everything's alike. Now I'm gonna put I'm gonna pull the cosine x out in front, just makes it easier for when I distribute. I won't have to do the two and the cosine x separately. I'm just putting the two in because th things are multiple multiplied. I can kind of rearrange them uh, whatever way um, is easiest. So now I have everything in terms of cosine. I'm going to distribute everything through, combine like terms, and see where this ends up. Well, I see some cleanup here. I can do cosine and cosine can go away. And combine like terms there. Okay, GCF. Set both equal to zero. Okay, cosine is equal to zero, pi over two, three pi over two. All the all four quadrants in that pi over four family. It says all values, so plus two pi n. Okay, I went through it kind of fast, but a lot of it is review, right? We we know how to do this. I'm just kind of um, putting things together a bit. Um, OK, so uh, tomorrow I will have a health session 1030 to 1130. It's going over these two same sections. I'll just go I'll just work through the even problems. I'll record it as well. And that way we are kind of on track to finish by Friday. So we can have well finished by Thursday. So we have Friday, Monday review, Tuesday test. OK, let me get your phones.